Good morning, friends. Welcome to worship today at Second Baptist Church. It is a delight to be here with all of you uh, this morning, and especially those of you who are watching from home or wherever you are. Thank you for taking some time out of your weekend to be here in worship with us. Today is World Communion Sunday, and it's really cool. We've got this beautiful altar set up, and we're going to be celebrating communion with people all over the world, um, and you're going to enjoy the music. Communion is going to be beautiful. Um, one little housekeeping uh, for you. I hope that you were able to grab a little hand sanitizer um, packet. We have them on the tables as you walk in, um, in between the aisles. And just before communion, if you would take a second and sanitize your hands before we participate in communion today, that would be very helpful. Also, I'm very excited about um, our search committee for Pastor for Adults has um, selected a candidate for us all to meet Wednesday, October the 13th. You all are invited here to meet Catherine Boren, and I know that you are going to love her as much as I did when I met her on Wednesday. We are in for a treat. She'll be here that Wednesday night uh, to meet with all of you and answer some questions, and we'll get to know her a little bit. So I invite you to be here and to welcome her and to show her the second be love that we show to everyone when they walk into our doors. I know that you'll be delighted when you get to know her. Thank you so much also for those of you who have already brought candy for our Trunk or Treat event. That's on Wednesday, October the 27th. The gray bin is right outside the office. And uh, if you wouldn't mind picking up a bag of candy and dropping it in that bin sometime before uh, the 27th, we are going to have a ton of cars out in the parking lot with their trunks open and games and a bounce house and food trucks. And all of you are invited to participate and come and bring your car and help us put on a great event for our Second B uh, family and friends. So thank you to those of you who are already making that a great event for our 2B kids. Now, let's just take a moment. Let's take a breath. Let's prepare ourselves for the beautiful service ahead of us today. Would you still yourselves and prepare yourselves for worship with me? The Lord be with you. As you are able, would you stand with me for the call to worship today? Welcome to this place 
We gather with God's children from around this world. Where we all hear the tender voice of Jesus. Welcome to this place. Where heaven and earth embrace in peace. Welcome to this place where all is made ready by our God. Where we, in our brokenness, find healing. We are welcome in this place. join me in prayer. Dear God, we thank you for today, and we thank you for the ability to come together here and with other believers around the world to remember the love that you poured out for us. Remind us each and every day that you're here with us, and remind us of your love. Comfort us with your presence, and instill your peace within us. It is in your son's holy and precious name we pray. Amen. y'all want to come to the front with me for children's time? I'd sure like to see your faces. Come on down. Olivia, you want to come join me? Come on up here. Let's go, Dax. Come on. Come on, Audrey. It's beautiful. Yay, thanks for joining us for children's time. Great job on your first time to Acolyte. It was beautiful. Thank you guys for being here today. I am so happy to see your faces and to get to talk to you today. I have kind of a little challenge for us. We're gonna try something. 
really cool. I want every single one of you to close your eyes. These people are going to see if you're peeking. Close your eyes. Keep them tight. And while your eyes are closed, Dax, close your eyes. There you go. I want you to imagine the most beautiful thing, Alexa, with your eyes closed, you've ever seen. The most beautiful, don't say anything out loud. Just picture it in your, behind your eyes. The most beautiful thing you've ever seen in your whole four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 years of life, right? The most beautiful thing. Okay, show me a thumbs up if you have it in your head. Oh, I like it. Okay, okay, open your eyes. We're going to do a few questions here. If you, Anderson, if you envisioned a sunrise, did anyone envision a sunrise? Oh my goodness, I'm so good. Okay, did anyone envision flowers? Flowers, look at this. Did anyone envision a brand new baby? Oh, look at this. This is a magical. Okay, did anyone envision fields of green and hills and rolling trees? Oh, you did. Nice, Olivia. Good. This is so good. Did anyone envision something I haven't even said? Okay, Liliana, what did you envision? The most beautiful thing? A fairy and a hill. A fairy and a hill. Nice. None of you envisioned someone's face? Not yet? Okay. 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 All right. Now, everybody close your eyes. Close your eyes. One more time. No peeking. Close your eyes. Thank you. Okay, this time, I want you to envision God's face. Okay, hmm, I love that. I love Presley's eyebrows. God's face. What is that looking? Okay, show me thumbs up if you have a vision of God's face. Does anybody? Okay, open your eyes. I'm very curious. God's face. Okay, do you think, Presley, you kind of did this with your eyebrows, like I'm not sure. Do you think your vision of God's face is the same as Dax's? You think it's exactly the same? God looks exactly the same behind your vision? You don't know. Okay, what do you think, Anderson? Do you think your vision, because y'all are sister and brother, do you think you and Alexa have the same vision of what God looks like in your mind? You think kind of, maybe, because you're related. What do you think, Addison? What do our visions see when we close our eyes and imagine God's face? Can you picture it? Yes. You can? That is, that is so, I wish, I wish I could. I, I wish I could. I, you can't? I, I can't. When I close my eyes, I know I have to work on this. I've been working on this for a long time. When I close my eyes and I imagine God's face, I, I can't put a finger on it. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my whole life. And I haven't seen it. I know it. I know I haven't seen it. But I think that everything that I see that is beautiful, I see it in your faces. I see it in the rolling hills and the green grass. I see it in the flowers. I see it in the newborn babies. And in just a minute, Alexa and Miss Cindy are going to read to us, some in English, some in French. I want you to listen really carefully and see if you can hear some of the words that say, Lord, how majestic is your name. That's what I think of when I think of God's face. How majestic, how beautiful, how wonderful are you in your image that I want to have in my mind. And God wants you to have those same images in your mind. And that is what we do when we praise God, when we worship God. We give more glory than we can even imagine to this most awesome God that loves all of you unconditionally. Okay, so when they read together, I want you to listen really carefully and see if you can understand everything they're saying. All right, will you pray with me? God, you are majestic and you are beautiful and you are greater than anything we've ever seen or heard or even know to look for. And God, we thank you for that. We thank you for the love that goes on and on and on forever for each and every one of these children and their families and for this beautiful church that we, that we are here today in. God, be with all of us as we go about this week. Help us to do everything we do to praise you and to glorify your beautiful name. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, if you're going to preschool praise, we can head back this way. Otherwise, you can sit with your folks.
Our Old Testament reading is Psalm 8. Éternel, notre Seigneur, que ton nom est magnifique sur toute la terre, ta majesté s'élève au-dessus des cieux. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes, to silence the enemy and the avenger. Quand je contemple les cieux, ouvrage de tes mains, la lune et les étoiles que tu as créées, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Tu l'as fait de peu inférieur à Dieu, et tu l'as couronné de gloire et de magnificence. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet. Les brebis comme les bœufs et les animaux des champs. The birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. Éternel, notre Seigneur, que ton nom est magnifique sur toute la terre. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Give us wisdom to perceive you. Give us intelligence to understand you. Give us diligence to seek you. Patience to wait for you. Eyes to behold you. Give us, O oh God, a heart to meditate you. Give us your peace to enjoy you. Give us life to proclaim you. In the name of the Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever, world without end. Amen. I invite you to stand.
Our gospel reading this morning is Mark 10, verses 2 through 16. Some Pharisees came, and to test him, they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one in flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. He said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. all we had to sing, if that's all we had to do today was to sing, yes, Jesus loves me, it would be enough. Uh, Welcome and thank you for being here. Your presence is a gift. It's a joy, honor, privilege uh, to worship with you. If we can be of help to you um, at your convenience or after the service will be available, there are cards in front of you. We're honored to pray pray with you. You can place those cards on your way out in the uh, offering boxes on your way out after the sermon at least. Maybe you'll stick around for all of worship too. That'd be great. Uh, Today will not be a sermon about a marriage, divorce, sex, or adultery. It's going to be way better. It's going to be about soccer. And I lost him. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, yeah. See, little Johnny was playing soccer out there on the field with all his little friends. And as you well know, has has happened billions upon billions of times. Johnny had brought his ball for everybody to play with. And Johnny said, if we're going to play with my ball, we're going to play by... Yeah, you are awake. Yeah, and as you well know, as the kiddos begin to play and they don't adhere to Johnny's rules, Johnny throws another fit and grabs his ball and says, if we're not going to play by my rules, then we're not going to play at all. That's right. And Johnny leaves. Uh, That's my good Johnny impression, by the way. Uh, Johnny leaves, and as he does with his ball, looks over his shoulder And the children have procured a new ball and have continued to play and have fun. What are the rules? Whose ball are we playing with? 
what game is it anyways? What's it all for? Fabulous, important questions. Here in Mark 10, by the time we've gotten to Mark 10, although there is a good bit of material left, depending on regardless of where you like to end uh, Mark, there is generally agreed upon, particularly in the uh, synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, there is a three-year cycle to the ministry of Jesus. Three times Jesus visits Jerusalem. Now, in the Gospel of Mark, here in uh, uh, chapter 10, twice Jesus has foretold, uh, predicted, uh, for, uh, uh, shared with his disciples and the crowd following him about his upcoming passion, his death, his receiving the cross. And uh, generally speaking, this three-year cycle of Jesus' ministry can be divided into uh, three sort of uh, seasons, three uh, years, three categories. The uh, first year is a year of obscurity. The second year is a year of popularity. And the third year is a year of, of adversity. And one of the things I, I believe about Jesus is the life of Jesus is emblematic of what it means to be alive. Yeah, all that we have gone through, we take such hope, such courage, such encouragement that Christ has been through it as well. So if you take nothing else today, I encourage you to take one of these words. I imagine that, one, that each of us are in one of these seasons of life, obscurity, popularity, or uh, adversity. Uh, obscurity is a fabulous season of life. You're cooking something. You're, you're working on something. It's in your garage or on your back. Maybe it's in the back of your mind. You've got an idea. You've got something going. Yeah, good for you. And nobody knows about it. Yeah, that's great. The season of popularity. We see this in the life of Jesus. There is an extended season by which the crowd surrounds him that the masses have come uh, to hear him, that he feeds the masses. You have been cooking this thing and working on this thing. You have gifts and talents and skills. You've got something to give this world. And after a season of obscurity, in a time of popularity, you've given it to the world because your gifts and your skills and your ideas are meant for you to give it to the world. And it's a blessing to the world. And it takes off a little bit. And hey, you're, you're popular for a time. And, and good for you to, to remain humble in such a season. And also, we know popularity will not last. We weren't designed to live atop the mountain. Popularity, although is good, as we see in the, in the life of Jesus, is not meant to last forever. And popularity will turn uh, to adversity. Adversity. And one of the difficulties, and yet one of the encouragements that we take from the life and the story of Jesus is that season of adversity, that season, that year-long season in which people begin to be upset by the teachings of Jesus, in which people begin to, to plot as to how they might remedy the world of Jesus. One of the encouragements that we can take is that seasons of adversity, particularly in the model of Jesus, end in absolute loneliness, betrayal, and capital punishment. That's encouragement, isn't it? 2022 might be even worse. Yeah, the life of Jesus suggests that it can go from bad to worse. And the life of Jesus risen above the grave, proclaims to a world that resurrection eats adversity for lunch. Yeah. And now he's gone to preaching. <laughs> yeah, and one of the struggles, one of the dangers when your pastor doesn't use a manuscript is they can go off script. So uh, we're mindful of a conversation we've had with friends of ours as their marriage deteriorated. And our friend said to us, she said, oh, I don't, I don't call it my divorce. I call it my graduation. <laughs> yeah. And I, I don't say that to, to, uh, to be pro-divorce. No, 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 no. But to speak of such is to speak of such in a resurrection mindset. Yeah. You lose your job. You're fired. 
And to think of that as an opportunity for something new, yeah, that's a resurrection mindset. And if you have been, or your friends have been, or your family members have been through the great adversity that we call divorce, yeah, we can take such great hope that resurrection eats said adversity for lunch. Yeah. There was a miracle. There was an incredible miracle that took place in the home of a young family. You see, parents had a baby. And they said, they sat, said baby uh, into, uh, into the crib in said baby's nursery. And they walked away from said baby. I know they're behind me. They walked away uh, from said baby and a miracle happened. That baby went to sleep. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> and as is uh, necessarily the case in one's universe, when the baby is asleep, the four-year-old is really loud. And the four-year-old uh, came to the parents and said, I want to talk to my baby sister. And the parents said, Shh, please lower your voice. And so the four-year-old said, I want to talk to my baby sister. And the parents said, you can talk to your baby sister, okay? When she wakes up, when she wakes up in the morning, you can talk to her all day long. You say whatever you want to say to her. It'll be incredible. This is a very fictional story, don't you know? <laughs> and then the four-year-old screamed the two most common words, at least said in our home, no, now. <laughs> and as the four-year-old's voice goes up, as the infant goes up, mom and dad pour another glass of... Communion, grape juice, what were you thinking? <laughs> and the four-year-old, as four-year-olds do, won on this occasion. And so mom and dad said, okay, you can go talk to your baby sister. And so mom and dad followed there behind the four-year-old until they reached the threshold, at which point the four-year-old turned around and said, no, 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 no. I'm going to talk to my baby sister alone. And the four-year-old closed the door, which doesn't happen in our house. Doors are only slammed in our house. The door, the door was closed behind, and the four-year-old approached the crib, and mom and dad leaned in and cupped their ears to the door. And the four-year-old bent over baby sister and said, Where did you come from? <laughs> Who made you? You've got to tell me because I am beginning to forget. Where did you come from? Who made you? Because the longer I live, the more I begin to forget. The longer we live, it seems, we get further from the source. And Jesus says to receive the reality of God can only be done as a child. Yeah. As a child. So what... What does it take? What does it take to receive the reality of God such as a child? I think we receive at least one bit of instruction today, and that is single-mindedness and wholeheartedness. You see, the adults, not once but twice in this gospel selection, twice the adults ask Jesus, what are the exceptions to the rule? Twice the adults come to Jesus and say, what are the loopholes to said agreement and said relationship by which we might get out of? And one of the great spiritual truths in all of my life, one of the great spiritual truths, I believe present here in this text, one of the great spiritual truths is this. It's very important to put the proper emphasis on the proper syllable. And the adults have put the wrong emphasis on the wrong syllable. Are there exceptions? Sure, yes. Are there loopholes? Sure, yes. Jesus doesn't seem to be interested in the exceptions and the loopholes. Jesus is interested that it is the power and the generosity of God that make two people into one. So are you looking for exceptions? You will find them. Are you looking for loopholes? You will find them. Are you looking for critique of the church? You will find it. 
Are you looking for critique of this church? You will find it. Are you looking for inconsistencies in the lives of brother and sister and neighbor Christians such that we might all call them heretic, hypocrite? You will find said inconsistency. Scripture says, seek and you will find. But do we also seek resurrection? Do we seek the power of God generously and graciously given such that the two become one? Seek and you will find. Yeah. St. Benedict of Nursia in the 5th century, 1,500 years ago, wrote a, uh, uh, what's known as the rule, the Benedictine rule, establishing a, a priestly monastic, monastic tradition. Hundreds and thousands of priests over the centuries have, have practiced the way of St. Benedict. Are you a rule follower? Or are you a rebel without a cause? Rules are only meant to be broken. Yeah, I, I, I suspect that in each of us, both of these exist, right? There are rules we like to follow and there are rules that we like to ignore depending on the season and the context and so on and so forth. Generally speaking, in my experience, when religious folks start talking about rule, it's not that great. And St. Benedict has written this sacred uh, document, the Benedictine Rule, and it can essentially be, uh, uh, be summarized in, in, in three words. In Latin, ora et labora, meaning prayer and work. And what I find so captivating by this mantra, prayer and work, is that I sense that all of life, all of life can be categorized into one of these, prayer or work. Prayer is our joy. Work is our, not only our duty, but work is our our privilege, all of life can be categorized in prayer and work, in this healthy rhythm of the two. And, and there are seasons, friends, there are seasons where there is so much work that at the end of the day, there seems to be little to no time left for prayer. And you know what? As spiritual family, as church, as community, we pray for you. We pray with you. There are seasons of life where work comes to an end and one wonders what might, what might be next. And we join with you as spiritual family. What a gift it is to be the church, to pray with you. There are extended seasons of life in which you might be thinking, I wonder what it would like to be. I wonder what it like, would be like to work in such a way, in, in such an organization that actually maximized or capitalized or valued the skills and, and talents and ideas that I have uh, to offer. And we, your spiritual family, your church, we pray with you and we pray for you. And for those of you in the season of prayer, mm, mm, prayer, and work, all of life, categorized by this rhythm. Yeah. Now the word rule, the word rule in Latin, it means regular practice or rhythm. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I think our world places a high value on balance, right? Are you nervous I'll knock over communion? I'm just pretending. I'm not really... Our, our world has a, has a, high, a, a high value on balance. And, and, and I, I don't find balance to be a very spiritually enriching concept. Because at some point, if, if life is all about balance, something's going to drop. All the stuff you're balancing, some of it's going to drop. You, the one who are doing the balancing, act, you're going to fall. You're going to drop. I think rhythm is a far better spiritual Word. I think rhythm is a Sabbath word. Prayer and work. Rhythm. Yeah. In Greek, so you see, in, in Latin, the word rule means uh, rhythm. In Greek, this word uh, rule is connected to the word trellis. Trellis. That the vine might grow. That the vine might have structure. That the grapes might. Verse 4, that the vine might lean upon it such that when the long night comes, such that when the storm comes, 
in the morning, it's still there. And one of the things I just find so beautiful about a trellis, a trellis uh, uh, like an atom, a, a trellis like your pastor's head is mostly empty space. Can a brother get an amen? It's mostly empty space suggesting the rule of God, the rule of Christ is, is freedom. There's so much freedom here. Yeah. You see, I think the adult mind, I think the ego mind sees the trellis and wonders, well, what if we planted it over there? Or what if we built a bigger, better trellis? Or what if we don't want to grow grapes and we want to grow? Yeah. And I think the child sees the trellis and the child says, I bet I could climb on that thing. Jesus, do you think if I climbed on that thing, you think it would hold me up? And I think Jesus says, there's only one way to find out. Climb on up. Brothers and sisters and friends, may you never, ever, ever grow up. Never grow up. And may the room, may the rule of Christ Make the two one always. Let's pray together. Good and gracious God, shape us more into your image, your kindness, your goodness. You are the vine, we are the branches. May the fruit of your vineyard feed the world. In the name of the Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit, we pray together. Amen. I invite you to stand as we continue to worship and respond together. Father, this morning we come to you in gratitude and in thankfulness, grateful for this congregation, their love, and their generosity of spirit, thankful for the earth and all you have provided, from the universe of the planets and stars which you unfurled to the air we breathe and the niche we each feel, caring for each other in so many ways, both visible and the unknown loving each other and the world around us. We are a people that act large, but indeed are so small. So generous in spirit, but sometimes so frugal in action. Help us, Lord, to open our minds and our hearts to your love, your vision, and your generosity. Open us in spirit and in love to give generously, love deeply, 
and to follow your lead. We praise and exalt you. Amen. join me in prayer as we were taught. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You can be seated. God, may this bread connect us more closely with you. And with our neighbors near and far, bless this bread, we pray. May uh, the fruit of the vine remind us of our interconnectedness of the people around the whole world. 
Bless this cup, we pray. May this simple meal bring us into union with you, your people, and your world, united in the one body of Christ. Bless this world, we pray together. In just a moment, our deacons will come by, and they will serve you. We'll pass these trays. We invite you all uh, to take bread and cup and hold on to it, and we will celebrate the meal of Christ together in just a little bit.
On the night before he was crucified at a Passover meal with his closest friends, and Jesus took bread, he prayed for it, he blessed it, he gave thanks for it, he broke it, and he shared it. He offered it to his disciples, as I believe is it, it is offered to us today. May the resurrection of Christ, making all things one again, may it be within you as you receive now uh, the bread of Christ. Likewise, after the meal, Jesus took a cup and he shared it with his friends. And he said, this is the promise, the promises of God, the promises of new life. May this be within you. Receive in the name of Christ. In all of this, we give thanks to God. I invite you to stand and pass the peace of Christ with one another. Yeah, that's okay.